Coming up on Mountain News this morning as life inches closer to normality. After months of shutdown, Kentucky football was able to partially restart this week. And we take you to Letcher County. That's where one summer food service program just hit a major milestone. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Lacey Roberts, and thank you for joining us on Mountain News This Morning. Today is Wednesday, June 10th, or like we like to call it around here, Hump Day. We made it through halfway through the week, and that heat that we saw at the beginning, thankfully, may come down just a little bit. Let's bring in Brandon Roberts and talk about that, and something that we can expect mid-afternoon. Good morning, Brandon. Good morning, Lacey. Yes, we're tracking the possibility for some strong to severe thunderstorms later this afternoon. That's why the red banners are on the graphics and the severe, the severe weather alert day is in effect this morning. So we take a look at the Mountain Parkway. Here's the thing. We're not seeing anything yet, so that's the good news. Maybe a few clouds across parts of the region. I think we're seeing that across a lot of the region now this morning. But as we head into temperatures, that's kind of the big story this morning. Very summer-like with temperatures basically running in the 70s. Actual air temperatures when you factor in the humidity and the uh, dew points, it feels pretty sticky out there this morning. So again, temperature change from this time yesterday. This is actual air temperature. Hunt 12 degrees uh, warmer up toward Huntington, Charleston and uh, over toward uh, Ashland. And then you see several spots at least a couple of degrees colder. Only Monticello are a couple of degrees warmer. The only spot a little colder is Monticello. So take a look at the out the door forecast. Weather awareness is crucial this afternoon. Have a way to get those warnings, the WIT weather app, a weather radio, something, because this afternoon we could see some storms fire along a cold front, and some of those could be on the stronger side. I'll track them out for you coming up in just a little bit. Lacey? Thank you, Brandon. And each school, each year after football and basketball season, many schools go through coaching changes. Well, in one school in Pike County, they have two new faces. One of those being the new boys head coach, Robert Amos, announced back in April and just a few days ago, the new girls head coach, Denise Campbell. She says she's excited to teach her players about more than just the game. It's a new change. It's sometimes tough, and it will be for kids but I want them to get to know me as, but no more than I, how much I want to get to know them and, uh, and teach them a little bit about the game of basketball, actually about life, because that's, you can learn a whole lot through it. Both coaches said that they cannot wait to see their players on Monday. And the high school dead period ends in less than a week, and high schools are preparing for their athletes to return on June 15th. When WIMT's Willie Hope talked with school coaches in the mountains on how they're preparing for athletes to come back. That's a sound we haven't heard for a while and won't hear for a while at high school practices. I think it's a misconception to think that football's been opened back up. I think we're here conditioning athletes and talking to our, our athletes. Even though they may not be in pads on time, teams can start working out on June 15th, putting the onus not only on coaches to wipe everything clean. Moving forward, it's going to be a lot, of, uh, a lot more time for the coaching staff uh, to be here to get the kids in and out and be safe. But custodial workers will play a vital role as well. We have set a schedule that, you know, they're there every day. They're going to clean it every night. Some of the procedures won't change for coaches. All of our equipment is clean. You know, all, all coaches should have sent their helmets off for reconditioning and sanitizing. Our shoulder pads have been sanitized. But COVID-19 will take cleanliness to another level. As far as the training, the lifting, we'll have to go 10 and under at time groups and uh, get those kids in and get them out. And we're going to have to have a lot of time in between to let them be gone before the next group comes in. Especially in trying to get their athletes to clean. High school kids, especially high school boys, uh, not always the most cautious when it comes to certain things. So, Which might be a bit of a challenge starting out. Willie Hope, WYMT Mountain News. Workouts will go through July 12th for football. The plans for after that date have not yet been released.
And Kentucky football returned to facilities Monday for voluntary limited workouts. Players had to complete a health and wellness questionnaire and pass tests along for their other safety procedures. Josh Pascal was one of those players to return. Pascal was diagnosed with skin cancer nearly two years ago. He says doctors told him that he isn't at any higher risk to catch the virus. The defensive end said the team feels extremely safe. I know that our strength staff and our training staff, they're going to make sure that we're in the uh, best environment possible. And with that, we're basically in the safest place in Lexington right now. Players were also required to wear masks during the workout. Pascal said he and his teammates are just ready for the season to start. And protests against racism are continuing around the state, country, and around the world. Dr. Ricky L. Jones is a UK graduate and currently chair of Pan-African Studies at the University of Louisville. He believes this is a movement that will make history, but wonders how long the movement will keep the attention of Americans. What America is very good at is doing things for a moment, and then once the news cycle shifts, they move on. So. I'm really wondering how much talk there's going to be about black oppression, white supremacy, all of these things in America in the next you know, month or two. He says right now he is seeing what he teaches in his classes. And the Cowan Community Action Group partners with Kane Kitchen for a summer food service program in Whitesburg for kids ages 18 or younger. WYMT's Madison program tells us more about this year's program. Hi, how are you? Cars form a line at Kane Kitchen waiting to be checked in. How many kids? It provides food to the youth. The, it takes a burden off the families. There's some work to our, our community members. So we have a stop up here and we also have a stop at the bottom of this hill today. As they pull forward to pick up their meal kit for the week. So the folks who are driving by here today pick up ingredients to make seven breakfasts and seven lunches for the week. So uh, in the bag we have celery, cheese, uh, cucumbers, and we have turkey along with some bananas. Then cars drive onto the next station. So in these bags, we got uh, bread, canned goods like uh, corn, green beans, black beans. All with the goal of filling the local need, with this year's need growing as Tuesday marks their 100,000th meal given out. We hope that this site serves as a model for the rest of the state. If we can pull this off in Lutcher County, Kentucky, I think that other counties can rise to the challenge and punch above their weight class, just like they're doing right here in eastern Kentucky. Driving away with cars loaded with food and kids' bellies soon to be full. You have a good day now. In Letcher County, Madison Pergram, WYMT Mountain News. Now this is the fifth year for the summer food service program. Officials say by the end of the summer they could possibly reach the one million meals mark and that would be awesome. And a man in Laurel County rescues a baby deer. The man said he almost ran over it with his lawnmower. As you can see in the video, the baby deer was released back into the wild and soon reunited with his mother. They seem to be happy to run off together. Time now for our daily Helpers and Heroes segments where we continue to highlight the folks who are working hard on the front lines across the mountains in the region. Let's take a look at our first submission today. And our first picture comes to us this morning from Deborah. This is her son, Josh Bargo. Josh, originally from Eastern Kentucky, but is in Portland, Oregon right now, working in the critical care unit at a hospital. I couldn't imagine being that far from home during a health pandemic, so major kudos to him for doing what he's doing. His mom tells us that he's someone that has to care for this, or so, he says someone has to care for the sick, and he's proud to do it. We are, she is proud of him, and so are we. Our next picture was submitted by Chuck. This is his wife, Kim Davis. She's a nurse at Prestonsburg Healthcare. Chuck says Kim always goes above and beyond to take care of those in her care, including her family, and judging by this picture, it looks like Kim enjoys her job very much. We thank you Kim for all you're doing right now and always. And finally our last picture today comes to us from Hannah. This is Wade Robinson. She's a certified nurse aide at a long-term nursing facility. Hannah tells us Wade has been in a CNA for 15 years 
even during the and even during the COVID nineteen outbreak, is in nursing school working to become a nurse. That's dedication, and not to mention awesome. Thank you, Wada, for being awesome. So, of course, what we just showed you on the screen was just three of the fine folks across the region who are working hard to make everything that uh, we're doing possible, including the folks at Can Kitchen. There's all kinds of folks working in different ways to help out on the front lines. If you'd like to submit your frontline hero or helper. Go to the website, WMT.com, and just hit the drop-down menu on the left side and find the Helpers and Heroes tab. Lacey. Thank you, Brandon, and thank you for joining us on Mountain News this morning. We'll be right back with more news.